So I'd like to thank uh, other organizers for invitation and give me a chance to talk here. So I will talk on Coulomb branch of supersymmetric case theory, which I'm working on with Blevel and Finkelberg for several years. So we write, we wrote several papers on the subject, sometimes with other colleagues. <coughs> so in, in, in these, these works, we try to give a mathematical rigorous definitions on what physicists call the Coulomb branch of the gauge theory. So the first talk is about the, uh, motivation and some basic idea of the definition of our our oh, basic, basic idea behind our definition, mathematical definition of the Coulomb branch. So the input data is the following. So G is a complex reductive group. Say so general linear group. And sometimes we also consider a maximal complex subgroup. So for GRN, it's the unitary group. <coughs> and I take M, so this is a symplectic representation of G. So when uh, you consider maximal compact subgroup, this is a cotanyak. representation of the maximal compact subgroup. <coughs> so symplectic representation means that, so this is a usual representation, and also uh, M is a symplectic vector space, which is preserved by the, the group G. So this particular example, which in, in fact later I will assume this assumption. <coughs> so if N is a complex representation of G, Then you just take direct sum with its dual then it, uh, it has a natural symplectic form, and <coughs> this is a particular example of a symplectic representation. Then uh, physicists assign uh, to the dot data for the n equal to supersymmetric gauge theory. And then uh, by, also by compactification by Swan, so you get 3D and equal to 4. <coughs> yes, yeah. So this is a quantum field theory, and so mathematically uh, it's not clear what, what it is about. So there is no rigorous definition. <coughs> but anyway, so, Given G and M, you consider uh, connections on the principal GC bundles. <coughs> and <coughs> so this is basically connection, GC connection. Uh, plus uh, <coughs> uh, spinners with bodies. is in M. So M is a, since M is a representation of G or G C, so you can consider the associated vector bundle for the given G C <coughs> bundle and take uh, tensor product with spinner bundle and you consider section. So those are the fields and you introduce certain Lagrangian, take a pass integral and you consider a quantum field. Those are those. <coughs> Uh, the quantum field theory which physicists consider. Then uh, from them, they assign the so-called Higgs branch and also Coulomb branches. <coughs> so this is a uh, hyperkähler manifold.
this uh, sister action, YSO action, is having the <coughs> uh, Riemannian metric, but uh, rotating complex action. Ah, uh, in fact, with SU2 action, SU2 action. So in my lecture, we only see the S1 action in, in SU2 action, uh, possibly with singularities. <coughs> and the Higgs branch is easy to define. So Higgs branch is, this is hyperkähler quotient. of M by G, G or GC. So I use the following notation, M triple slash G. <coughs> so this is a symplectic reduction. So you have moment map and take uh, affine algebra geometric quotient. Mu inverse zero is affine variety and take GIT quotient, or uh, it is also different. So if you consider the hyperkähler moment, huh? so this is this funny, fa 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 fancy mu is hyperkähler moment, huh? and then take zero. <coughs> and the Coulomb branch is more difficult to define, and at least so together with Brevan think about we, we define the Coulomb branch as a fine algebraic variety with symplectic structure. Holomorphic symplectic structure on regular locus. Together with Oh, by the way, so, so I should say that this SU2 action is, uh, is induced from SU2 action on M given by the quaternion multiplication. SU2 is considered as a pure SP, quaternion number with absolute value one. So you have multiplication and it descends to the quotient of space. <coughs> so I, I, I'd like to explain this. Yeah, blackboard is too small, so I, I need to erase. I hope this is readable. Is this readable from the back? Ah, I even don't have eraser. Somewhere. Huh? Ah, this one. <laughs> So it depends on the country, so each country have a different ways so. I, I believe Japan has most advanced eraser. So if you have a chance to visit us, yes, you will see. And we have eraser cleaner, that is really good <laughs> industry. So anyway, uh, this is what I want to say. Ah, and that assumption, maybe, when, when M, as I said, M is N plus N. <coughs> and also, uh, in fact, it is interesting that, uh, so byproduct of our construction of which seems to be not, not, not uh, <coughs> recognized in physics uh, until recently. So this is quantization. <coughs> so 
So in general, if x is affine, algebraic variety with polymeric symplectic structure, or maybe Poisson structure, I mean more general. So it means, in particular, the coordinate ring of x is has Poisson bracket with the usual uh, properties of the Poisson bracket, Leibniz rule. Then uh, we say h bar. So this is a algebra over polynomial ring in one variable with variable h bar. <coughs> is a quantization of x. So this is by definition. So if we ma you make h bar to be 0, so which I mean you just take this quotient. <coughs> so this is isomorphic to coordinate ring of the variety. <coughs> and the second, so if you take function f, take f and g, then the Poisson bracket fg is recovered by the following formula. So you take lift of f and g and take commutator. Then uh, at h bar equals 0, uh, this becomes commutative ring. So if you take commutator, this is divisible by h bar. So this is equal to Poisson bracket up to maybe this uh, module, module, module h bar. So this is a usual, usual way, way to define Poisson bracket. If you have a non-commutative deformation of, of a commutative algebra, then you define Poisson bracket in, in this formula. So you get Poisson algebra. And conversely, if you have Poisson algebra, then you ask whether this, this kind of non-commutative deformation exists or not. <coughs> And when you find such non commutative it is called that it is a quantization of x. And for Higgs branch, at least when m is n, so example, maybe I can write, write in here. So if m is n plus n star, <coughs> then uh, you consider differential operator h bar h more precise h bar differential operators ring of h bar differential operators on n so you take a half lagrangian subspace and you consider differential h bar differential operator is something like h bar times differential <clears throat> then you have the commutation relation uh, <clears throat> with uh, variable x, and uh, if you specialize h by equal to 0, then you get symplectic form like this. And uh, so this is a quantization. This is a quantization of just the C of n plus n star or maybe just n plus n star, variety n plus n star. <coughs> and uh, Higgs branch is, is a reduction. And there's, so reduction is, is a basically algebraic uh, uh, procedure. So one, first you take the level set of the moment map and then take invariant part. So, so you have maybe 
Yeah, th this is a little s too small. Okay. Maybe I just erase this. Then you have the so called ca quantum Hamiltonian reduction. Well, but it's not so difficult, but I, for the sake of time, I don't recall it. So basically, you take the level set of a moment, but take invariance. Then you get quantization. <coughs> so this is for sim Higgs branch. And so our definition is, is automatically gives also the quantization in, in this sense. In fact, uh, that is the way how we define the symplectic structure. So we introduce quantization of the Coulomb simultaneously and define the formula, which I just erased, gives a symplectic form of this Coulomb branch. So uh, I hope this is it somehow uh, from it becomes a little bit clear uh, how we how we approach to this problem. So rather than just just trying to define the variety itself, <coughs> so we think that the the ring of function on the the variety is more fundamental. Uh, maybe I forget to mention that I did not accrue much by M MC. <coughs> Coordinate ring of MC. So this is the MC, is a, as I said, MC is a fine algebraic variety, and <coughs> we consider polynomial functions on. MC, so this is C of MC, and in fact MC, MC will be recovered. So if you use the <coughs> construction, standard construction, uh, algebraic geometry, so once you have the commutative ring with several nice properties, then you can recover the variety as a, its a spectrum. So you consider space of <coughs> ideals and put some top approach and consider uh, functions on it. I will not record that this is standard. <coughs> so uh, for affine algebraic variety, it is the same as defining the affine variety and also this commutative ring. <coughs> so I rather construct this commutative ring. And in fact, this is called the chiral ring in physics. Or sometimes called the ring of ring, ring, ring of monopole operators. So this, the element of, of this ring is called the monopole operator. <coughs> so this is an operator acting on the Hilbert space in quantum field theory. <coughs> so how you should consider this, these monopole operators? So take a point and its neighborhood, small neighborhood. in R3. So I cannot write, write the, the three-dimensional picture, but this, this is picture in 
in 3D, and I have a point. And the boundary, boundary is small two sphere. <coughs> Then, uh, so if you have uh, quantum field theory, uh, then quantum field theory gives a, a partition function, which is, is a number assigned for three manifolds given by path integral over the space of all fields. And if you have this kind of boundary, three manifold with boundary, then you consider the uh, space of boundary conditions. And uh, this function, partition function, depends on the boundary condition. So it gives an uh, element in the, the space of function on this boundary condition. So from this, uh, if, if for physicists assign the quantum field to space, So I hope you, so you, 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 you are familiar with Atiyah Seagal's uh, axiomatic approach to topological quantum field theory. So for three manifolds, you assign numbers, and for two manifolds, you assign the Hilbert space. <coughs> so this is a function, functions of the space of boundary conditions. Then you observe that this, this should be commutative ring. And this is, this is a chiral ring. And the element in here, H, is monopropate. So why it is commutative and how you consider the multiplication? <clears throat> so this is, I mean, if you are familiar with TKFT, then maybe you, you heard about two-dimensional TKFT, so the one-dimensional smaller version. So if you consider the, the pair of bands, so you get uh, multiplication. And in fact, the TKFT, two-dimensional TKFT is nothing but Lobenius algebra. <clears throat> we have the same for here. So you cons in instead of pair of pants, I consider the following picture. So I have two points, and I consider two, two spheres uh, surrounding these two points. And the, 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 this is a three manifold with boundary. <coughs> so I denote this by x. So boundary of X is S2 and S2 and S2. We have three boundaries. Two are in, in orientations are different for in, in uh, two spheres and uh, outer two spheres. So then, uh, so partition function for X should give homomorphism from Z of S2, tensor of G of S2 to G of S2. So, as I said, this is H tensor. Right? So, this is a multiplication. <clears throat> and I hope the, it is clear that uh, this is commutative. Because, so I, I take, I write two points and I take two surrounding two spheres, but, so this is a uh, three-dimensional uh, picture. So you, I, I, there's no particular ordering for this point and this, among this point and this point. So you can, you can continuously change these two points and somehow this multiplication <coughs> should be uh, invariant under the, this kind of change. So it is commutative. And also associativity is also clear if you uh, consider the, the, the picture which you at one, one more point. 
<coughs> so from this consideration, this G, G, this H should be a commutative, commutative ring. And this is a chiral ring. This, this is a chiral ring. So in order to uh, define the Coulomb, as I said, uh, Coulomb branch can be recover, recovered from this chiral ring by spectrum. So it is enough to define. So, Yeah, in fact, in, in, uh, in 90s, people studied this kind of problem in, in at least in specific situation. So conventional. Somehow, this approach sometimes works well, but sometimes not because of some technical issue, which I will mention afterwards. <coughs> so this is. Uh, Donald sensor, for example, Donald sensor. Or maybe it's three dimensional by, by version is cast sensor. <coughs> so, uh, first people consider, so, 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 I, I, I return back to the original. Input, so you maybe bet for here you better to consider the maximal compact subgroup. So you have <coughs> compact Lie group and its quaternion representation. Then, uh, so you can consider the generalized cyber victim equation. So you can consider partial differential equation in four dimension or three dimension. <coughs> but I just consider the three dimension case. So the, it is a equation for pairs A. So this is a G connection, GC connection. Yeah, you must be a little bit more careful for, for to make sense of the, <coughs> make to write down the equation. If you are familiar with cyber witten equation, then. It's, it will be clear how people, uh, how I, I should correct it, but somehow I just give you a schematic <coughs> uh, way to understand the equation. So S is a M valued, valued spinner. Then uh, you consider the equation that S is killed by Dirac operator, and also, so you consider the hyperkähler moment map for S is equal to F of A. <coughs> so mu of S is roughly half value valued in, in. So hyperkähler moment map is map from M to the algebra of G. Dual mobile tensor X R3. <coughs> but R3 is, is an imaginary part of the quaternion, and that is identified with B algebra for SP1. <coughs> and the, 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 this, for this, you must replace this by, replace by, by one ohms. So once S is appropriately understood, then mu of S has values in uh, one form with values in, in, the, uh, in the dual of the D algebra. So maybe this is what is done. So curvature lives in the same space. Curvature is G, G star by one form. 
So this equation doesn't make sense. As I said, I, I cheat a little bit, but schematically the equation is correct. At least if the, all the boundaries are trivial locally, this is my equation is correct. <coughs> so anyway, this is some partial differential equation, and if you take quotient by gauge group, this is elliptic. And you just count the number, so, so, so partition function, g, g for m, x3, is num number of solutions. So for example, the, the, the simplest case, I mean, Casson theory is a case when gc is su2 and m is equal to zero. So in this case, there's no first equation. And the second equation just means the cur curvature is zero. So you consider flat connection, and you just count flat, flat connection. That is basically definition of Casson invariant. Then uh, for three manifold, so this is a closed case. <clears throat> and if g of, for, if you have two manifold, g of s2 is roughly homology of modular space. So, solutions of 2D version, 2D reduction. of this equation. For the case of Casson invariant, uh, <coughs> so uh, as I said, the, the equation is just flat, means uh, flat connections. Solution of the equation just means flat connection. And the 2D version is just the same, the flat connection on two manifolds. And it is a, the fam famous space. I mean, it has singularities, but this is also identified with modular space of rank to C10 uh, stable bundles. And it is a projective variety, and you consider that it's homology. <coughs> and if you have X uh, with manifold, so three manifold with boundary, sigma, then uh, you have Gx3 in G of sigma 2. So this, this is a sum uh, cycle, cycle in, in modular space <coughs> given by boundary condition. <coughs> boundary. So you consider the uh, Maybe three manifolds. So it depends on the, the equation, but so basically uh, you consider some sum x and sigma. So you consider the modular space varying all the boundary condition and take boundary value gives some cycle in, in, in this space. So this is a heuristic approach. To, and under some assumption of x and sigma. People succeed to realize this idea. So, so basically, basically, to avoid singularities of modular spaces, <coughs> succeed.
but somehow uh, so this this, this 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 assumption is too restrictive and because of this, this is, I mean this is partial only partial success not not the full success and somehow <coughs> um, this this approach is not not so much uh, <coughs> Uh, so much studied afterwards. <laughs> and also, uh, in, in this approach, usually you, you, you get, and also, may, uh, may as I said, uh, so we should take sigma to be S2. So in fact, S2 is somehow because of this, this issue. So you, you people don't consider this case. Then the solution, all solutions of star are basically reducible. So if you're familiar with cyber witten theory, then uh, S2 has a positive spin, positive scalar curvature. Then uh, uh, you, you, from this equation, you derive S vanish. So it is a reducible solution. That means that this is, the modular space is completely singular. So usually people study the modular space which has mild singularity, so you have irreducible, generically you have irreducible, irreducible connections, irreducible solutions, and uh, in some, so smaller dimension you have see, might have reduced, but somehow by dimension counting argument for homology or something, uh, you just avoid those singularities. That is a way people justify this approach. So in this approach, you, 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 the, this sig sigma is, is the worst case. You cannot not apply, apply this kind of. And also, <coughs> So in this most uh, approach, I mean, if this uh, modular space is re 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 some reasonable space, usually re re maybe reasonable is not good, but, but some, some usual uh, variety, so this is mostly smooth and might have some smaller singularities for smaller dimensions, then the homology group is finite dimension. Huh? Z of S2 would be finite dimension. Then, uh, also you must define a co multiplication on this so that this is commutative. But then, anyway, so this, because this is a finite dimension, this is zero dimension. zero dimensional variety. I mean, still, algebraic geometry can still study some, some non-trivial zero dimensional variety, but this is not correct. Not correct Coulomb branch. Coulomb branch is, maybe I didn't say, the Coulomb branch, the dimension of the Coulomb branch is twice of the length of the group. times rank. So this is completely wrong <coughs> if this would be a five, zero dimension. So somehow it means that you, you, you must really work on the singularities on the modular space. Any question? <clears throat> so
So our approach So we use, we replace S2 by ah, Ravi, Ravi, or La, maybe I, so here in Italy I should, I, I must remember what is the right correct word. So this is a, a singular version of Ravioli. So you write Ravioli in this way. So this is, the union of, so D is a formal disk. And the check, the times is the punctured formal disk, D, D, D minus zero. So in fact, as I initiate in, in the motivation, that the, I mentioned that this, these two balls is very small. So you con consider point, point singularities. Uh, so you don't really don't consider S2, but so this, I, I wrote this picture, but in fact, I don't really consider the fields which is defined over the outside of the, this ball. So in fact, I consider the fields which is, has singularity at the, the, this point. This is more correct <coughs> intuition for monopole, field, monopole operator. So somehow S2 is not completely correct. So this, I, I should consider this S2 is very, very small. Otherwise, it's not correct. And this is more complete, more, more correct picture. And use more algebra geometric language. So in fact, this is fortunately people language. People has, has developed corresponding things in geometric representation. So this is the, the affine glass money. So this, this is a correct modular space. So I, I, I will, tomorrow I will give some more detailed discussion for the affine glass money. So there's a several way to understand it. One is, so you consider uh, K, K is a ring of formal row and power, field, field of row and formal row and power series, and consider O, so this is formal power series, so spec of K is D times, spec of O is D, and affine Grassmannian is defined as G of K divided by G of O. This is one way. But also this is a space of polynomial maps. There is a topological approach to affine Grassmannian. Polynomial map from S1 to maximum compact group and divided by maximum compact group by adjoint action. A conjugate, no, no, no. Sorry. Action from 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 light light multiplication, or or this is map polynomial map from S one to G C, which sends f of one to uh, time unit unit uh, unit element in the group. So this is a kind of a space which topologist has been studied for many years. <coughs> So this is the case when 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 you you don't have the 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 uh, matters. Um, so maybe I didn't mention that what is matters. So the spinners with various in 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 the representation M is called matters. And this is the case when there is no matters. So we should consider that instead of the general modular space on S two, we should consider affine Grassmannian as so modular space. Solutions of of the equation on S two, so with m equal to zero, should be replaced <coughs> Maybe put that I still.
So this is an infinite dimensional variety. So the modular space is usually finite dimensional, but because of the local nature, this is this is infinite dimensional. So that is I mean, this is good because we really want to have very big commutative ring as homology of some space. So finite dimensional space is not a good space to work uh, to to have this infinite dimensional vector space as a homology group. <coughs> And for, for when m is n plus n star, uh, we consider the space R. So this is the space which we introduced in our definition. So R is, uh, or maybe R with G, G O action. So R divided by G of O. So this is some stack, infinite dimensional stack. It is a moduli stack of uh, bundles, G bundles, and various sections. This labiola. <clears throat> so more precisely, what does it mean? So we have moduli of P1, S1. So this is a bundle and section on upper, upper, hem, upper, upper disk, and also. P two S two on D and gluing phi P one restrict to puncture disk to P two. <coughs> uh, respecting S one and S two. So this is a modular space we will consider. So then we claim that H star of G of O. In fact, so because this is a global quotient stack, so this is nothing but the equivalent homology of this space R. So R is defined by assign. So R, R, R is uh, assuming that P two P P P two P P two is a trivial one. In fact, because of this this, this identification, so once S one is given, then S two is automatically defined, automatically introduced by this isomorphism. So you don't need to specialize. It. So anyway, I will. And the, the detail more, more detail tomorrow. So, anyway, so I have considered this equivalent homology, and uh, this has convolution product. So basically, by the same, same rule, which say same way as intuition. So instead of Balls, uh, two balls surrounding two singularities. So we consider three copies of disk glued over the puncture disk. Then you have projection Pij, and you define. P one three. So, so the convolution product is defined in the usual way. So this defined the product.
So this is a little bit, I, I cheat a little bit because uh, in order to pull back a homology class, you must have the Poincare duality, but R is not smooth, so you must be a little bit careful. But still, nevertheless, you can define a convolution product rigorous way. So I, I, I will not explain that part. So anyway, so you can define commutative multiplication on here and main theorem says that H star G O R with star E is a commutative ring uh, and finitely generate, et cetera, et cetera. It has several good properties. Hence, uh, we can define the Coulomb branch as spectra of H star. And the quantization. This is automatic. Uh, so you consider uh, sister acting on disk or DD, and also R acting by loop rotation. So you have disk and origin, and you consider that. Loop rotation. So it acts on the everything, uh, all the space which we, we consider. So you consider S, S1 equivalent, sister equivalent, maybe G of O. So this is A of H bar, and this is a quantization. So this is our basically our definition. And so far we checked, several, so this is some, somehow a little bit abstract definition, but somehow uh, we have some, some, some tool to define, uh, to, to describe MC more concretely, in particular for Quiba, so the so called Quiba case theory, we explicitly determine what MC, in some cases at least. Then uh, it, it is the same as for what the physicists computed in very different way. So because so, so far no, no, no counter example that this, this definition is not correct are uh, found. So we believe this is really correct definition. And in fact, as I, I, I hope that our intuition is motivated from, from physics, so it must, it should be correct really. So let me see. I hope to, I, I still have some time to discuss example. So I started with a very tri trivial example. So I take G to be C star and N, N, N is zero. M equal also zero. Ah, maybe I should emphasize that my representation could, could be zero, zero representation. And in that case, the affine glass I, I only consider the affine glass minor, <laughs> not the space R. Then, affine glass minor G. So as I said, this is. Uh, uh, there are several ways, G of K divided by G of O, but it is also mapped to uh, S1 to G of C divided by G of C. <laughs> polynomial, polynomial map. But there is no, I mean, polynomial map 
So this is this is. But uh, there is no, uh, how to say, so, so this, this, is, this is also S1. So if you want to have polynomial map of S1 to S1 with this, then, then it is just uh, G of n. So n, n is integers. So this is a bunch of points. So you consider it corresponding homology group of this. But as I said, this is, this, this, this is a co quotient stuff. So we should consider uh, uh, guru, guru, guru G divided by G, 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 G of O. And so at each point, of course, this group acts trivially. This, this is the point. So this is just. And also, you just replace uh, maybe this is n. So this is g of n. So. So this is a kind of parabolic subgroup. So you, you, you can you can you, you can ignore this this whole part. <coughs> so it is well known that the decrement homology of point is polynomial ring in one variable. So this I did not by C of W. So W is a generator for this equivalent homology. But I need to distinguish. So this is n. So for each n, I have this one. So I denote this by R times Rn. So Rn is fundamental class of this point, Z of n. So this is a de de description of this homology group as a vector space. So I, then I need to uh, describe the multiplication. And in fact, this, for, for this, uh, it is well known multiplication. This, this is a group. So you have Pontryagin product on this <coughs> uh, homology group. is induced from product. So more concretely, so if you consider Zn and Zm, so this is mapped to the G of n plus n. Point-wise multiplication on the target. target. So it means Rn multiplied Rm is just equal to Rn plus M. So combine this H star of G of O divided by guru G is C of W and R of 1 and R of minus 1. So these are generated by those three elements. And R1 times R minus 1 is equal to R of 0. So this is the unit. In the so this is a commutative ring. And if you take a spectrum, so this is a C cross system. 
C correspond to the first variable, and C star correspond to the other two variables. And this is R3 cross S1, and this is, this is a flat, 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 flat hyperkeller manifold you have. And in fact, this, this, I mean, people, physicists already, so this is a two trivial case, so physicists don't consider this example seriously, but so in this case, physicists said this is a free theory, so you get Coulomb branch is something trivial, and indeed, the Coulomb branch is flat, flat, flat space. Okay, maybe I, I, I finish by saying the second example. So second example is that you, you just take N to be one dimensional vector space. So then the, the space is almost the same. So R, 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 so R is the, the pairs of the affine grass mania and together with sections. So you have P1, S1, and P2, S2. So in this case, P2 is trivial. And S1 is, so anyway, so this is a trivial bundle. So S1 is just, just, just formal power series. And the phi, this, in this setting, phi, phi, phi is given by g to the phi. So R is triple, so g, 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 g of n, and S of 1, not a triple, pairs. So P1 is a trivial bundle, phi is in this one. And the condition is g to the n of S1 is still in C of z. So because I assume S1 and S2 are both a section defined over the disk, and phi is a, is a uh, identification outside the origin. So S1 and S2 must coincide outside origin by phi. That means if I multiply g of n to the S1, then I get S2, but S2 is Define over the whole disk. That is the condition. So it means that S1, if n is positive, then this is automatic. Right? S1 is polynomial, and if you multiply g of n, this is polynomial. If n is positive. But if n, n is negative, then it means S, S1 is, in fact, originally di must be, original S1 must be divisible by minus of n. So somehow, maybe I don't picture. So the picture is, so you have points and n equals zero. We have O and we have O. For positive part, we have O, but for negative part, n equals minus 1, we have g o and we have g to the square of o. So, so the picture is different for positive part and negative. So because of this, multiplication is different. So if r, r prime n is a fundamental class, of the fiber over z of n. Then prime r of 1 times prime r of minus 1. So if you multiply the positive one and negative one, then nothing will change. But if you multiply positive one and negative one, then it is no longer unit. So this is equal to that. So this is a generator form. So I get H 
tau of g of o divided by r x and y. So, x is equal to prime of r1, y equal to plus 1, and the equation is x, y is equal to w. But the W is just given by x, y, so this is a polynomial in, in two variables, x, y. So its spectrum is C2. And this again has a flat, flat metric. And in, in fact, this is, in this case, physicists say the Coulomb branch of this case. This is called QCD in physics literature. And this is a flat, flat R4. So this is a physicist answer, and it matches with this. Sorry for overtime. I stopped now here today. <laughs>